tell you, I'm just about fed up. It's something else. So I'm going to get started with showing you what I did this morning and how complicated my life is. It's just, just beyond comprehension how complicated life is. The thing is, is it's supposed to rain tonight, so it even made my life even more complicated. So I'm going to show you some things here, and, and then we'll discuss what we got to do to, to resolve these issues. So this morning I came out because it's going to rain, and I split, I don't know, two or three armfuls of firewood just like this. So I had to get it in so before it rained so it wouldn't get wet. I have three locations in the house that we store firewood and typically on a normal day without rain I fill up the spots that I emptied the night before so let's say I use eight pieces of wood like this I'll replace eight pieces but since it was going to rain I wanted to get more because I'm going to use eight pieces a day until the rain stops so I split some firewood it took me uh, maybe 45 minutes to do all that and I also split some kindling and kindling is no different you just make it into smaller pieces and Carolyn uses this so I tried that this morning and for kindling that works pretty good now the next complicated step we got here is we take this high-tech piece of equipment that you buy off Amazon for about I don't know 20 or 30 dollars it's got two probes on it right here and a LED screen takes a couple batteries and and that spot that you just split you have to take those two probes and you stick it into the to the edge here and I know you can't read it but it's a 16.3 and the other side which has been exposed to the Sun for three years says 12.2 so you want to make sure that you measure the inside that you just split so you know what the moisture content inside the wood is, not on the outside. And then I threw it up here, and I did my next piece. I'll do one more here, because, you know, life is pretty complicated. Now that, now that I know what the moisture content is, the next time I split this, I don't have to worry about measuring it, because it's the same piece of wood. Now, your moisture content needs to be below 20%, otherwise you're just going to mess up your wood stove. So, throw that up there. I'm going to turn off my moisture tester. Now, I know somebody's going to tell me, Oh, you can't do that! Because you always got somebody who's going to tell you, You can't do that! Now, and the reason that they're going to tell me I can't do that is because, I don't know, this is going to break off, or something's going to happen, or I'm tearing up my hatchet. Well, we have two hatchets. This is Carolyn's hatchet. She likes this one a lot more than I do. And I will admit that this one has broke. She's This is her second one. They last about a year each. This one has lasted me since I bought it. No problems. And we got this little hammer. And I know this thing's going to break off and hit me in the eye and I'm going to die. But that's never happened either. The $20 is what this costs to replace. 20, 30, I don't even think it's $30. It's pretty stressful. You figure I'm spending... $20 a year on firewood or on heat I should say you know most of the average home I would think spends two to three hundred dollars a, a month maybe on heat I know somebody's gonna say I only pay a hundred and fifty you're wrong but uh, I, I would think a good average is two hundred to three hundred dollars for heat depending on the size of the house of course my house is uh, 200 square foot it's a it's a just a little bigger than a bedroom although my grandparents had a bedroom when I was a kid the thing was huge but you know somebody's gonna correct oh no my bedroom's a lot bigger than that so that that was how complicated my morning's been spent about 45 minutes doing that the rest of the time I've just spent thinking about this YouTube video now I will admit getting this life started was pretty complicated as a matter of fact I've put a couple compilation videos together already where I've talked about the well putting the well together uh, I talked about the first five days I was here so I would say the first two years being here did take a lot of work now all the firewood that we have here I tell you just more than I can handle 
Now I have 15 years worth of firewood. You can't have 15 years of firewood. You're lying. It'll rot before then. Well, it's already been here nearly four. And I don't see any signs of rot. This is oak. Now if you had pine, maybe. But oak and hickory, it's gonna take forever to, to rot. It may never rot. As a matter of fact, I've told the story that when we moved here, there was a pile of firewood down in the woods. It's probably been here since the 90s. I burned it. It was perfectly fine. There was no rot. But that, that's just another reason why you can't do something. Now, I, I do recognize that a lot of people don't live in tiny houses. And 15 cords of firewood would last about two and a half years. Maybe not even two and a half years. Maybe, well, let's just call it two years. It takes about six cords of firewood is my understanding in a regular size home whatever that is I don't know what a regular size home is but we only use about a cord a year this year we won't use that much this time last year we were already heading into below zero temperatures and this year we've only gotten below freezing maybe two or three times maybe seven times let's just call it seven times because I'm sure somebody's gonna say I know that's not true I live in Missouri it's gotten below freezing seven times so I will admit that this was a little rough having to get this much firewood in the beginning. And we worked our tails off trying to get this much. And I spent a total of about $300 to get it. It's not what you think. Most of it we got for absolutely free. So 15 cords of firewood for $300. What happened was the first time, I don't know, maybe $125. I'm guessing on some of this stuff, but it's an educated guess. I'm trying to remember but it was the first year and we didn't have any dry firewood when we moved in this house in january we had eight cords down there that we used up in a heat exchanger that i made for the camper and then we had tons of firewood up here but we couldn't use it it was still wet so i bought some from a guy who claimed it was dry it wasn't and you got to be careful with that. These guys lie their hindsight off. They've never seen a moisture tester to save their lives. Oh yeah, it's uh, it's 15% guaranteed, but it, it wasn't. But he delivered it. I felt guilty that he delivered it. And even though he lied, I should have made him take it home. But I went ahead and bought it. And the second time I had to spend money, I had to, I really don't think this was my fault. We went to get some free firewood. And I'm gonna explain free firewood here in a minute from this guy's yard. He says, uh, just back down in here. And I said, no, sir, I don't think I'm gonna do that. I only have a two wheel drive. I'll, I'm gonna get stuck. Well, you need to back down here. And we bickered about it for, I don't know, two or three minutes. And finally, I gave up. Sure enough, I got stuck. So I had to hire a tow truck to come get me out. You know, you make these mistakes. The firewood was a mistake. I shouldn't have bought it. And getting stuck was a mistake. I should have just stuck to my guns. So $300 for 15 years of firewood. Like I said, some people spend $300 a month on firewood, and I got 15 years of firewood for $300. Now somebody's gonna say, what about chainsaw cost? And, okay, so I think I used three one gallon jugs of gas. So let's call it another $15. The chainsaw, it's still here, so I don't know how you calculate that cost. I don't know how long the chainsaw is going to last. So, but we use chainsaw for a lot of other things too. So I don't think that that's a, a fair assessment, but let's just call it another uh, 25 to $50. So we're up to, let's just call it $400 for firewood for 15 years. The rest of it took very little effort and I didn't have to touch my woods. Yeah, I get these questions all the time. I'm such and such age. I'm 65 years old. I'm 70 years old. I can't do that. What the, can I do? I, I, well, I can't answer that question for you. I don't know what size house you live in. If you need 6 or 15 cords of wood a, a year, that's a lot of work. But if you need one cord a year, that's three truckloads. Three truckloads is not hard to do. My truck is three truckloads. Mine's just a little four-cylinder. You know, three truckloads a year. And I actually think when I get up to my later 50s, I will start getting one quarter a year, three truckloads. I use this app. I've uninstalled it because I don't need it right now, and it just keeps going off. It's mind-numbing how much it goes off. But there's this app called Free Stuff. 
So when you go to your app store, type in free stuff. And there's a free stuff app there. And it monitors Facebook Marketplace. And I think it also monitors Craigslist. And every time it says free firewood, you hit the button and you say, uh, yeah, I'd like to get that. There's tons of it in the springtime because that's when people are cleaning up their yards. Some of it is not always that good. I mean, we have a, a pile over here, this stuff here, but Carolyn uses that to cook with. And then we got this stuff here that was just kind of junky wood. But for the most part, it's all pretty good wood. And you let it dry for three years. That's key. You got to let it dry. Otherwise, you're just wasting your firewood. And people don't listen to me. They just want to argue and bicker and tell me how wrong I am. But if you have dry firewood, 20% or less, you're going to be burning yourself out of that house. People get this wet firewood. As a matter of fact, I see these trucks running up and down the road right now. And I, I actually saw a YouTube guy cutting firewood. He's out of firewood, so he's out there cutting it right now so he can have it for January. Well, you're wasting your firewood. My firewood is in, in wood stove is 85% efficient. That means, in, in my mind, that it's burning 85% of everything I put into it. And only 25% of the smoke, the garbage, is coming out of the chimney. But when you're burning wet firewood, you're only getting about 30% efficiency. Because 70% of it is being used to heat that water up, which is just going out the chimney. You're wasting a ton. Oh, but I need that wet firewood, so I got coals in the morning. Well, when you have dry firewood, it goes up like a matchstick. So you just throw a match in there and it lights up. So I don't know why you need coals, because you want to find reasons why you can't do it. Just like you can't use a hatchet. Can't use a hatchet, that's dangerous. Yet, I can, people go out on the roads drinking and driving, smoking their cigarette and on their cell phone, and they feel like they're totally safe. Yeah, I nearly got smacked the other day. Some, some woman's got her phone, I mean, literally right here. She never did see me. I tooted my horn, toot toot. And she's like, what? Get your head off the phone. But no, the hatchet is dangerous. Running a chainsaw is dangerous. Should I cut trees down in my yard? No, no, you shouldn't cut trees down. People are giving away free firewood. Go get it. Well, I just don't know if I can do that much work. Like I said, first year or two was the most work we did here. Built the tiny house, the well, the firewood, got solar panels set up. But now I don't do much. I feed the chickens a couple times a day. And I've gotten that down to a, an art form now where it only takes a few minutes in the evening. Kind of dreadful work, but that's all it is. I just dread doing it. It's not that I, I can't do it. It's too hard. And the solar panels, everybody's wanting to tell me how, how ridiculous it is to have solar panels. I only spend $30 a month on electric. Okay, then you don't want to get solar panels. That's fine. That's not why I'm off grid. That's not why I have solar panels. It's because I wanted to disconnect. I wanted to be free. If you want to pay your $30, I'm not complaining. If you're only paying $30 a month, I don't know how much electric you're using. I don't know what that means. I would assume you're not using a lot, but let's say I got two or $3,000 invested in solar panels, batteries and charge controllers. It'd probably take you 10 years. And that's if you reduce your electric, I'd like to set on how much electric you're using. Telling me you're using $30 a month doesn't tell me anything. That's how long it's gonna take you to pay off, but that's not why I do it. It took me a lot less to pay off my solar panels than 10 years because I was using a lot of electric. Solar panels taught me how to, to stop using so much electric. Now, the harder project that I've been working on, which has nothing to do with off-grid, is cleaning up this mess, which I'm making quite a bit of progress here the last couple days. I got the whole front cleaned up now. I just got to pick up the, the junk that we collected, but we had it all spread out all the way out to here. And I've got that all cleaned up. Get this little spot here done and I'm done. So here's the thing. Here's the thing that troubles me. Just the other day I made a video, maybe two weeks ago. And this woman from Alaska, or moved to Alaska, I was talking about their off-grid adventure and how much she hates it and it, it's a big, she was lying to herself and she watched all these YouTube channels and 
even though she didn't call us liars she said that we didn't represent it as well as what we should have and then i have others telling me uh it's it's too much work i can't handle it so you have one person who is saying i'm lying to you because it wasn't that much it's too much work or they didn't believe it was going to be a lot of work and the others that say there's so much work you can't define your definition of work obviously to me it's not a lot of work but on the other hand i don't go and have to work for an employer people will work themselves to old age and the job did it to them the stress you would rather work for an employer until you're so beaten down you can't do anymore but you don't want to live off grid where you're working for yourself so if you click this up next box it'll take you to a video where i was talking about uh doing a compilation video on the well so i hope i can inspire you to figure out what you want to do so you can live your dreams thanks for watching